The first step in my process of reed making is selecting the cane. I get my cane from RDG Woodwinds, which is down in Los Angeles. They sell it for the last time I purchased it, $45 a pound. I buy it uh, two pounds at a time, so it comes to me looking like this. And in here, you have two pounds of cane. What I do is I split that up into three separate piles, and the way that I do it is the cane comes in varying lengths. So I set it from the longest to the shortest, and then to select the three piles, I just uh, put the longest in the first pile, the second longest in the uh, second pile, and third longest in the third pile, and I just keep alternating that way until I have three piles of cane, uh, which would end up looking something like this. And then after, after that, when it's measured, I'm looking at about 11 and a quarter. So the 32 ounces, it's approximate, the 32 ounces uh, split three ways evenly and I'll, I'll move the poles around until I get a somewhat equal weighing for the three piles. The reason I do it this way is because when I split the cane and I get my quarters and I end up cutting them to length, the number of blanks that I can run through the next stage uh, with the tools that I use and the blades getting dull that's about how many. So if you're wondering why the process is the way that it is, why don't I just do a whole pound? Uh, that's the reason why, because the, the, length, the blade life, the, the blades get dull and they, the performance diminishes. So it, it can go about this many from, for each stage of the reed making process. So when I process, the cane through stage one, this is what I'm looking at. This is a, uh, about 11 ounces of cane. So as we move on to the next step, I'll show you how I select uh, where to make the splits. Here in step two, I take each of the sections of cane and I'm looking for symmetry. Uh, when I split it and I get my four sections, what I hope to end up with is a section of each of the quarters that is flat and straight. And so when I sight down, if I see something uh, that's oblong, I'll try to split the difference in, in cutting it so that I don't end up with very steep rounds on the back of the reed or very shallow. Um, the reason for that is the way that it sits in the planer. So you want to get flat and, and uh, straight, relatively straight curves um, that would be about a one inch diameter. So the, the diameter generally of uh, clarinet reed cane is about one inch in diameter, approximately. So that you're looking to keep that as even as you can. Um, I use this to hold the splits as I use my chisel to, to split the cane. This is just a, almost like a cardboard holder for a tool that I had gotten at one point and I just sliced it and I use it to keep the quarters from going everywhere. So I have my chisel. This is a, a one and a quarter inch chisel, which will cover the width of any uh, piece of bamboo that I need to split. You can see on the back side, it's uh, highly polished and there's a reason for that. Uh, when you use a chisel, you have to polish the, the back side. So I use that to my advantage when I come in here and I place the chisel. What I'm looking at is a reflection of the front half that I see and it makes a whole circle. When that whole circle looks um, symmetrical, then I'm ready to split. So I've got it and the circle looks complete. So I just give it a nice firm hit. And then I gather up my pieces. Now I have my first split. I hold them together, place the chisel back, try to get that first split. I'm trying to get perpendicular to my first split and then also making um, that circle complete in the reflection that I see. And then another good hit. And hopefully what I end up with is four splits that are somewhat even and giving me flat straight surfaces here and straight grain, a section of straight grain running on the inside. This is a detailed 
close-up of how I split the cane. Uh, first thing I do, sighting down, is I'm looking for symmetry, um, trying to optimize. Uh, as I look to at the round, I'm trying to make sure that it's um, even and as straight as I can possibly make it. If, if there's a bow in it, I try to split that difference so that I don't lose a whole quarter. So I drop it down in here and I place my chisel. And as you can see in the reflection, that's not centered properly. That's not centered properly. So what I'm looking for is an evenness. I'm trying to match up and make the uh, cane look as symmetrical as possible in the reflection of the chisel, keeping it as close to 90 degrees as I can. So once I have that, I grab my mallet, and then I put the two pieces back together. And now when I put my chisel up, what I'm looking for is the mark closest to me being perpendicular in the reflection. So not only am I looking for the reflection to make a complete circle, but also that the, the two marks are even. So right now they're not even. Now they look even. And the circle looks complete, so I'm ready. And then what we're hopefully ending up with is four splits that are even. Here in the third step, I take each of the quarters and I use a little piece of wood. This is made out of oak to a, a rough length to get me in the ballpark of where I want to be in the length of my blanks. <clears throat> and I use that. Basically, I place it on the back or the bark end, uh, bark side of the splinter. And what I'm doing is I'm sighting and I'm looking for as little light to show through as possible. So once I find that spot, I don't, I also don't want rocking. I don't want this to rock or that affects how it sits in the planing jig. So I'm looking for the flattest section. And then once I think I found it, I sight down to make sure that I have uh, the best selection of uh, grain direction. So double checking that. And then once I think I have it, I take my pencil and I just put a rough mark and a rough mark. Okay, here I'm gonna try to show a close up of what I'm looking for when I use my read blank measuring. Uh, so we're gonna go and we're gonna try to sight down and get the light coming through. If you can see that, and then I slide that and I'm looking for as little light as possible. Now over here at this end, you'll see that it rocks and that's not good. It won't sit in the planing jig properly. But if I come back over here, trying to sight down and show you the light, you'll see that the light mostly disappears right about at that point. So here then I would hold it and now what I'm trying to do is sight down the cane to look at the grain for the section that I have located on the back is flat and if the grain looks good then I found what I'm looking for. So then I come with my pencil and I put my marks so now I'm ready to cut. After marking each one of the quarters, this is what we're left with. You might notice the four long quarters in the center of the screen right now. And you look at that and you might say, wow, you can get three or four out of one quarter. And you can't. You'll, you're lucky to get two out of something like that. Sometimes you do get lucky on the shorter ones and there's two runs of uh, flat, straight grain but generally you don't get as much as you think you would. In fact, over here you can see those did not make the cut. Um, just through experience, I've realized that if it's not flat or straight, if the grain is wonky or twists, it's uh, not gonna make it through the other stages of the process. So it's better just to leave it behind at this point. So now we'll head over to the chop saw and I'll show you how I cut these to length. Here we are at the chop saw. 
Uh, what you're looking at is a simple jig that I made that's attached to the fence of my chop saw. The jig consists of two pieces of plywood in an L uh, with a dowel attached to it. The dowel is a one quarter inch dowel that I made um, and it allows each of the quarter rounds to rest uh, safely on the quarter round while it's being cut, keeping my hands out of the way. It has a, a flip stop for my final cut to get the length that I, uh, that I need for each of the blanks. I'm gonna show you using this piece, which has two usable sections, one here and one here. If you put this all on, it ends up uh, keeping things not 90 degrees to the dowel. So what we need to do is try to get as close, uh, get as much of this off so it doesn't alter how it sits 90 degrees to the blade. And I'll show you how we do that. So I'm gonna set, I'm gonna set this here. These are the two usable sections and I'm gonna cut off this section that's not usable. And I'm gonna do that as a rough cut down here. And when you're using a chop saw, you have to have the piece that you're cutting butt it up against the fence because it'll grab it and want to throw it if, you're, if it's not secure. I'm going to put my hearing protection on and I'll show you how I do this. So I sneak up on that line, not all the way to the line, but close to it. And then I hold this and give it a quick cut. Then I flip it around and I put the section here lining up the end of the usable mark here with my laser. I have a laser on my chop saw that tells me where it's cutting. So I put that there, hold it very firmly and as far away as I can from the blade. And I have my first cut. I flip that around, drop my stop, put that quarter right up to the stop, hold it as far back as I can. And then I have the length that I need to make a blank. The part that's left over, uh, this is not going to get in the way, so I can just do a two cut. Put this up here, put the laser on my first line, drop the stop, flip it around. You have another usable section. This is a, a fractional dial caliper that I use for the length. And what I'm shooting for is a length of 2 and 23 30 seconds. And that seems to work out the best, 22 and 23 30 seconds. Uh, here, my stop, you can see that it's adjustable. It has a set screw that I can uh, dial in or out to get the exact measurement that I want on each of my blanks. So here we are at the end of stage number one, ready to move on to stage number two. In this batch, we were able to get 51 quarters that were cut to length and they uh, have good potential. They have a flat back so that when they set flat, they're not gonna rock and that's important. Uh, they have relatively straight grain here. Uh, the more that it twists and moves around, the less likely it is to survive the rest of the processes. And 
in my opinion, the less likely it is to play the way that you want it to play in the end. Um, so this being the end of stage number one, we'll uh, meet again when I start planing these flat at the beginning of stage number two.